and welcome back to coverage of the 2023 European Masters Disc Golf Championships. We are bringing you the continuation of round three. This is the back nine of the MP40 Elite card brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor, happy to be joining for this back nine and an exciting conclusion to round three that will really set the tone and the stage for that final round four where these players will compete for the coveted title of European Champion. You see here the standings. Anders playing an incredible, putting on an incredible pace so far and finding himself in solo first just by one stroke to reigning defending champion KJ Naibo. We see the Finns Mika Laiko and Tapani Aulu both representing on the lead card, giving it a push for the final podium spots and the chase card right behind them, giving some solid pushes of six down through the front nine. Very impressive. Here you see hole 10, a par three sitting at 120 meters. You have this initial gap between the trees that you wanna hit and then have your disc fade to the left. A big power hyzer and a really full throw. This one really requires a lot of forwards and leftwards movement, looking to play something stable to overstable for the right-handed backhand hyzer. See Mika to get us started here. Has a great height and pushing line, but you see just a little bit too straight. Finds himself falling just shy on those branches long. Although certainly a, a long open look to the basket for Mika. KJ here, you see significantly more width and height. Let's try and find that leftwards movement and... He also pushes quite long, but I believe filtering back to safety there. Tapani crashing the green. Had a nice shot, held it on the inside the entire way and just pushed around the rough far enough to give himself that putt from perhaps early circle two. And Anders, your leader, coming into this back nine. We see his placement and his touch and his power finds the double skip and is absolutely parked. Amazing shot. Textbook execution of hole 10 by Anders there, showing you why he's our leader right now. We go to KJ. Oh, and a healthy bid. But just a little bit low. He's really solid at that out of the bush stab putt style. He's able to generate a lot of movement with that short putting stroke we see Mika there giving him a long chance we'll be left with the three and Dapani as well able to find himself a look off the knee but not able to translate that as we see some short putts now remaining tap-ins Anders taking a stroke on the card here with that short putt Really nicely done as he extends his cushion to two strokes here. <laughs> and a bit of a fist bump left hanging. KJ to the rescue and he gets it from Anders, giving him props. A smooth shot on a tough hole that averaged just over par at 3.04. So a great birdie to pick up. Here we see hole 11, another par 3. Similar distance, but... Very technically different and significantly harder. This is a long straight tunnel with rough on both sides. Really important that you push something straight flying, use some under stability or a soft flex to try and use as much of the width as possible. See Anders here playing that Heiser flip, piercing through the right side, fortunate to get a friendly result off that end. Pretty great spot, finds himself in circle two. Another open look on one of these trickier holes. This hole requires a very good precision on both the height and the width. You see this tunnel quite demanding. Mika shaping that flex, but finding the early stability in the flight hits that main tree.
Come on. You see KJ lacing the gap beautifully and in fact firing long off the pin. An amazing line finds the full flight straight down the middle and really shaped the fairway. I think as the designer intended right there. Tapani looking to shape his forehand, but with the nose up so significantly, not quite finding the turn that he needs to keep it flying straight. Left with a scramble look, and he's done a great job to put himself up and close after that tee shot. Three is really best case. Mika with a smooth delivery to the green. Quite effortless. We go to Anders here with the long putt. Currently two strokes in the lead ahead of KJ. And it's a good chance. Very lofty. You see him ensuring that he doesn't go too far by not giving it a more direct bid. KJ there, though, finds the direct bid into the chains. Had a great moment for him to continue pushing. Tapani smooth on the green as always. And as you he see here, just some short work remaining. KJ gets one on the leader. Here you see hole 12, a par four. And although it's only 130 meters, requires a very specific landing zone and a sharp dog leg to the right, then playing to this gap you see here on your screen to that semi-protected green. This one requires two great touchy shots through the trees. Certainly about placement over power with this short distance. Just keep it in the fairway and stay controlled on your distance. KJ in a great spot. Very similar to his throw in the previous round has positioned himself right at the dogleg and the mouth of the next tunnel. We see Anders here with a lot more height. Would have found a lot of fade had it not hit that branch and I think maybe fortunate to drop down there. Could be quite significantly pinched, but the alternative may have been some thick rough. See Mika there just a tad short as well. It's a steep angle to the right. Going a little bit long of where those guys are is the sweet spot. And Tapani here shaping just a smooth, gentle shot into that perfect landing zone. Great display of his touch there. We see really not much to work with for those guys. KJ here with a great look to the green, looking to shape this forehand, has it out there and wow, giving it even a run. That soft bid will find him in the circle as well, that lush grass doing a great job of catching it quickly. Tapani playing the forehand as well into the green, finds a little bit less skip, but again, that heavy grass really negating a lot of that. We see Mika here shaping the turnover backhand comes out a little bit early and that is a tough range to be putting for par you'll certainly want to go for that this is anders third shot super smooth trusting his height plays it over the bush sits it down Park job for his par. Mika, on the other hand, has to work for it, but he's all right with that. Gives it a great stepper and throws the hands up. <laughs> you see Tapani in vague disbelief. Amazing Mika putting the energy on the green here. I think we'll see the rest of these guys make their putts now. 
This is KJ to take another stroke on Anders. KJ here for birdie. Anders tapping in the par. You see his disc just adjacent to the basket to be tied up for the lead. KJ Naibo just like that. Here we are on hole 13, a par 3 at 100 meters. You have once again this initial gap on both width and height off the tee, needing a left to right shaping shot. You see this basket protected right behind those late branches, really requiring a nice access to the low ceiling in order to hit the green cleanly. You see KJ playing the turnover and just a little bit low. Pani with a nice forwards pushing forehand here, gets it on a great flex and beautifully done. Makes it a straight line with that overstable Anheuser release and absolutely parked for the birdie. Great shot by Tapani. Anders here, also another backhand dominant player. I think throwing the least forehands of the four players on the card. And we see he does leave himself at about edge of circle, certainly with an open putt. Mika going much higher with a lot more turn. And as a result, does find himself on the inside corner. I think certainly scrambling from there. You see just how rough it can be here in Sarvash, Hungary. I mean, we don't even see the guy. He's going to be chucking a disc out, and there you go. Even that is a tough putt remaining. Edge of circle with the low ceiling, but... KJ up first has this long look. And it looks great from our angle, but out of the hand, it looks like he knew that one was not connecting. And you see just what it means to him there. Mika with a really unfortunate kick off that branch. Does not get much distance at all. A very stressful putt here, very taxing, but Mika Laiko, absolutely good for it. A great moment to make that putt, of course, not the position you want to be in, but that number could have started adding up very quickly, and it's a solid bogey save. Anders here. Really thoughtful. KJ, of course, knowing that Anders was likely to get the birdie and that in order to not let him once again separate, he had to have made the previous putt. As Anders sneaks to 25 under Tapani here, just outside bullseye. And he's putting together a great round, setting up five under here on 13. And we see a mixed bag for our lead card. Here we are looking at hole 14. Par 3, 85 meters. This straight shot requires an accurate entrance into this late gap tunnel. You can hit the ground early and slide your way up. It's really a test of your angle control. That putter or potentially mid-range. Can you hit the gap? We go to Tapani here, looking to have something slightly sharper in his hand for the forehand. Shaping this late gap and pushing to the right has put himself in a great spot. Looking to get three in a row for Tapani. Anders here playing this backhand left to right moving shot really high. Look at the late turn. As that thing fires through a lot of glide. Does filter just long of the basket. KJ here. 
A lot of understability as well and significantly lower from the hand. We see that one. Find the early wall of trees. Although it's quite close to the basket, it's very unforgiving in the gaps it, it does or does not have. And Mika gives the four cameraman fast on his feet. Slides right up there next to Anders. Both of them will be putting from a similar spot. We go to KJ. Anders with the long straddle. At a critical point in the round here, he is now separated by two strokes from KJ with those last two holes. Great moment there from the leader. Mika certainly giving it the chance. Just off the bend, we go to KJ now for the par. As we see Tapani once again very close. Still Mika putting. Hole 14 coming in as one of the easier holes at a 2.89 average. So we see two birdies, and two pars here on 14, no damage done, some strokes gained. Here we are on hole 15, a par five at 230 meters. This is a long extended tunnel shot. You have this initial shot off the tee, really asking for a left to right moving shape. A lot of players will be throwing that high turnover backhand or forehand. The second shot you're then throwing straight to leftwards, trying to hit this late gap into the trees, going to the final leg of the fairway where you have a guarded basket this one can, with two perfect shots, be eagled. Very attackable birdie, only 230 meters for a par five, but certainly not without its troubles. The rough is very thick. Just gotta keep it on the fairway and get as much distance as you can. Tapani with the hair out, ties it back up there for proper form. Of course, he's a professional <laughs> and you see he's shaping this forehand left to right. Full hyzer and really just a solid spot. All you need. Anders playing the significantly touchier backhand turnover. You really don't want any fade at all maybe a soft flattening out at the end we see that from Anders able to go very understable and with a lot of height to push further and further to the right we see KJ with more of an Anheuser release out of the hand and not quite finding that slower turn does not push forwards enough before turning over will be pinched at the corner it's quite potentially going to be an awkward shot for him again Mika giving this huge shape way up in the sky with the understability. And does look, I believe, filtered through that big tree there and fell into the fairway. That was a bomb. Not even completing the full flight and still pretty way up there. Can KJ beat the second corner? Actually, he was in a totally fine spot, a little bit deceptive from the initial angle. I thought he was... More pinched on that first tree to his right, but in a totally fine spot to continue attacking, and that he did. Tapani. Not quite hitting the entrance cleanly. Anders in a great spot. Really pushing this one out there. Incredible. Anders. Third, just like that, in two shots, is parked on the green. Shaping that second shot to perfection. We see Mika here hitting it nicely as well, getting a great skip. 
Fantastic shots there. Mika as well giving himself the eagle chance. We go to Tapani with the forehand roller. You see forced by that low ceiling, having to play to the ground. Didn't have enough airspace to push that distance. KJ able to putt his way out to safety and into the green. A solid scramble. Tapani still left with a lot. is able to slide his way up to that tree that'll be short work for him here you see Mika Laiko absolutely cashing it confident putt at an amazing moment especially for his round now sneaking to 22 under with that eagle fantastic really gave it a huge bomb off the tee and fantastic delivery to the green on the second certainly earned that one KJ certainly able to secure that birdie from the bushes. You see quite a favorable par 5 if you have the distance to attack on. Tapani here, I believe, for the par. Found a few more troubles along his way. As we see Anders, your leader, with the tap in 3. Incredible, and some great camaraderie from the card. Anders Swerd is four down through the last three holes. Pretty incredible, especially already being the leader before that. We go here to hole 16, a par three at 115 meters. You have this straight to rightwards moving shot, the basket tucked away in those shadows right below the tree line. You really need a solid, low piercing shot to get all the way to the green those hanging branches really gatekeeping anything coming in too high this one very tucked away and at that distance left to right the turnover backhand playing quite favorably if you have the distance the forehand can work as well but quite a tough shot As mentioned, Anders coming in a little bit too high and quickly shut down, is left in circle two. Mika getting this one turning. And as well, you see with that nose up angle, not quite able to pierce. Very tough shot, particularly when blind fully to the green. KJ as well, finding a lot of turn on this. And he looks to filter through. Ends at a similar range to Anders. Tapani here with a little bit more width initially, and you see that shaping very nicely below the low ceiling, and looks to have slid up all the way along that smooth green. Very nicely done. I believe Anders disc there. We'll get to that potentially Mika's. As he gives his long chance at the basket. Does have that compacker left for a three. A bid from our leader there. We go to KJ. An opportunity seized for him. Great putt there, putting his round to nine under. Really trucking ahead and looking to match those double digits once again with two holes left to go, already at nine. Putting together an amazing round. A few short putts left. This hole certainly averaging below par at 2.85. Just like that, Anders with a slip of focus finds himself with a bogey. 
I think to everyone's surprise, but certainly can happen to everyone. If you play enough disc golf, unfortunately, it will come to get you at some point. We see here hole 17. Certainly an attackable hole, but also one that can definitely provide some scoring separation. This par three is an 85 meter island with hazard all around. You see that line tucked quite close behind the basket as well. You really need to control your speed and delivery with the low speed disc. On the soft hyzer, potentially Tapani has been preferring that forehand and hyzer. We see KJ. is able to fight through to safety. Tapani really favoring this Anheuser release with a very overstable disc and he's been pushing it, but once again, he is on the island, has stuck it and not a bad spot, certainly within his putting range. Mika with a lower but I think more traditional line and pretty smooth on the big skip, plays the ground and does find it. Anders playing the inside hyzer, a little bit of flip up to his touchy shot and fantastic. Solid bounce back after what just happened on 16 and you see him. <laughs> Perhaps letting out a little bit of anger on that shot, some frustrations. If KJ up first from way downtown, has to float that one from that distance in order to avoid the hazard long, but is able to give it a chance even from that range. We go to Tapani here. Nope. Great line, very rare we see him miss metal at all. And Mika securing that one, getting the claps from his team Finland teammate. Anders here. Important to gain his confidence on the green back. And a colorful scorecard in the last five holes for our leader. Finds himself at 28 under with KJ taking that par. Going into the final hole, Anders with the lead by two strokes. Still a very tight battle. Here you see hole 18, a par four at 205 meters. One of the most difficult holes on the layout. You have about 100 meters into this late tunnel. You need something to push hopefully all the way out the other end, positioning you for a huge hyzer between the trees and the OB into the green. You're really looking for roughly 100 meters per shot. If you can push the first one a little bit more, it's preferable, but you really need to prioritize hitting the tunnel, keeping it in the middle. This hole can add up the strokes quickly and is able to really show the skill of these guys and their fantastic angle control. My kids, they are uh, like more. <laughs> Mika. Great nose angle, really nice turn. Has done all that he needs to do. Very nice, clean, clean shot there. And Anders as well, calling for it to sit. Fantastic spot out to the right of the fairway. Will open up that hyzer angle more, although really anywhere up there is all right. KJ as well. Although hugging the inside a little bit, he will have a significantly harder shot for his backhand. Might have some trees in his stroke as well. Could potentially be awkward positioning for him to Pani to end out his round three here in similar fashion to previous rounds has a very conservative shot 
I think playing this one for par, this one averaging almost a whole stroke over at 4.78. Oh, no. oh, no. Pretty significantly difficult hole. Tapani there playing just to the edge of fairway. Should be able to get his forehand out from there and to the green. KJ, no walk up. I think most certainly trying to still attack for birdie. And look at the shot. Absolutely incredible composure and poise from that awkward standstill. Sends it high and wide with a ton of speed. Fantastic as we see KJ really look to push at the end here. Mika from quite an ideal position. Fading significantly too early. And he'll be in the rough, I think. Circle two's edge. Anders with just the putter in his hand. And a smooth delivery. Both Anders and KJ looking to end on the birdie. We go to Tapani here. This is his third shot. And likely tapping in his fourth. Nicely done. Mika with a healthy chance there from the bush's edge, looking to end on a strong note. Mika ending his round there at 23 under, putting together a very respectable tournament. We see Anders, our leader, getting those double digits on that last putt to hit 10 under for the round, finding himself here in round three at 29 under, just shy of averaging double digits per round, is really setting an incredible pace matched there by KJ Naibo, maintaining that two stroke difference between first and second, also finds himself at 10 under for round three. Tapani with a very solid performance, 24, he has three strokes behind KJ currently. As we take a look at the standings, your lead card will remain. Anders, KJ, Tapani, and Mika all holding their positions. Incredible, Anders and KJ battling it out both to 10 under. A great 11 under from Marcus Kelström. Very impressive there to find his self in solo fifth. Thank you for tuning in to this exciting conclusion of round three. We appreciate your support. You can like, comment, or subscribe here on YouTube. If you're feeling extra supportive, you can check us out on Patreon. Thank you for joining. Make sure to tune into that final round action for round number four.